people of faith, Pastor Daniel here for our Sunday sermon on Sunday, November the 12th, 2023, Veterans Day Sunday. Our scripture, aptly so then, comes from John chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. This is where uh, one of the famous verses for Veterans Day is, uh, which is John chapter 15, verse 13, where Jesus says, Greater, has, greater love has no one than this, than for a person to lay down his life for his friends. But there's more to it than, uh, than, than just that. Let's unpack that a little bit. So let's read the scripture around it and hear the word of God for today. John chapter 15, beginning with verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your word. Your word who is Jesus the Christ. We give you thanks so much for your word who is the Holy Spirit. Lord, we give you thanks so much for your word. That is the sharing of the faith. And Lord, we give you thanks for the veterans who have shared the faith with us by their actions, by laying down their own lives. And for the Christian veterans, Lord, who have shared the faith with us by their service, by their teaching, by their example. Lord, we give you th thanks so much for your word. That is the holy scriptures that we have read before us. We pray, O oh God, that as we speak now, and as we listen now, that it may all come from you, O oh Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. We pray this, Jesus, in your name. Amen and amen. If you, uh, you know me, uh, as you get to know me, you know that I love contemporary Christian music. I've always loved contemporary Christian music, even before my BC days, before Christ. Uh, I loved contemporary Christian music. I didn't necessarily love the church thing, wasn't so sure about Jesus back then, but I still liked that music. Now, don't get me wrong, I, I love the classics. My dad raised me up on the Eagles. I'm a big Eagles fan. I think they're one of, uh, one of the greatest bands of all time. I, I love the Eagles, uh, but I just love contemporary Christian music. And I have a friend from Newberry, uh, where I serve. Newberry's a county in South Carolina. I served there for a couple of years as a pastor. And, uh, and I have a friend there who sings in her church's praise band, but she does not like contemporary Christian music. Uh, she just says, here I am, Lord, use me how you will. And so she sings in her church's contemporary praise band, even though she prefers traditional uh, hymns. I love traditional hymns too. I just like contemporary music more. It's how my soul worships. So she likes to kind of pick on contemporary music, and she says that those contemporary Christian songs are just 7-11s. I don't know if you've heard this before, but you sing the same seven words 11 times in a row. Well, perhaps one of the originals of that is called Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. It really is one of those where you sing the same thing over and over again. You sing, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. And you sing that over and over and over until finally you get to the bridge of the song. The part of the song where really we get an answer as to why this person is praying for the Lord to open their hearts. Why should you sing this? Why should you pray, Lord, open the eyes of my heart? There's a reason, he says, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. He says, pour out your fire and love 
as we sing power and love, excuse me, as we sing holy, holy, holy. It could be fire, though, by the way. Uh, Holy Spirit often shows up in fire, which is pretty powerful. So you got this song, this original 7-Eleven, um, high and lifted up, pouring, uh, shining in the light of your glory. And uh, that's the prayer. And I'm going to come back to that at the end of the service. Um, just to, That's the point of the service, is, is see Jesus high and lifted up, and, and how he does that, and, and how we can do that too. Receive that, and be that, maybe for other people. Be lifted up by others, and lift others up when that time comes. I don't know if you've ever uh, been a teacher in your life, whether you've taught Sunday school, whether you've taught in school, but if you've been a parent, you've been a teacher. You've taught your kids the good things, hopefully, and the bad things, unfortunately. It's kind of inevitable. You, you can't really help but uh, if you're teaching somebody, living with somebody like that, you're, you're teaching them. And uh, there's all kinds of ways we can be teachers. But I, I bring up this thing about teachers because this is what Jesus is. He says to his disciples here, I no longer call you students, but I call you friends. There's a popular Star Wars series right now. I think it's called Ahsoka. I'll probably just ruin that. Maybe it's Ahsoka. I'm not sure. Uh, but in this new series, it's on Disney+. Plus. The kind of main plot line in it is there's this Jedi. And if you know anything about Star Wars, you know that Jedi are these um, powerful people who kind of help influence good. So there's this Jedi who did have a student that she was teaching this person to be a Jedi too, and they had this falling out. And so part of the series is this former student and this former teacher uh, trying to reconcile that. Paul, the apostle, tells us that we've been given the ministry of reconciliation. Sometimes we get frustrated with students and we just want to cut them off. Sometimes we get frustrated with family members and we just want to cut them off. Sometimes we get frustrated with friends and we just want to cut them off. And I stand here as a witness today. Sometimes in life, you do need to separate yourself from other people. Sometimes they have bad influence over you and you need to separate yourself for a period. That period might be two weeks. That period might be two years. I don't know how long that period is, but I do know this. If you are a person who is a Christian with a heart after God, you need to be praying about the relationships in your life that are not reconciled. Again, Paul says that we have been given the ministry of reconciliation. That means that we've got a duty to reconcile ourselves with God and ourselves with others and to also encourage other people to be reconciled to God and to be reconciled with other people in their lives. So Jesus, the teacher, says to his disciples, you're no longer my students, but I call you my friends. And he says this because he says, I have taught you everything that I've learned from the Father. I have made it known to you. And I don't know if you caught on to this. There's, this there's, there's a refrain that Jesus keeps going back to. And it's not just here in verses 17 to 19. Starts all the way back, really, and uh, at the beginning of the chapter. Actually, it goes back further than that. It goes back to John chapter 13. Actually, it goes back further than that. It goes all the way back to John chapter 1. And wait a moment. Still, there's more. It goes forward too. John tells us plainly why he wrote his book. In John chapter 20, I think it's verse 31, he says, Jesus did many other signs and miracles that are not in this book, but these are written so that, there's a reason, so that you may come to believe that he is God's only son. You may call him Lord and Savior. You may call him God. Jesus, from the very beginning to the very end, preaches this. This is the refrain, love. In this scripture here, over and over, Jesus says, this is my command, Love one another. Just a couple chapters prior to this, though it was in the same context, from John chapter 13 to John chapter 17, this is just Jesus talking with his disciples. It's not a bunch of different scenes. We're not going to a different scene. This is one scene. Jesus has washed his disciples' feet. He has instituted communion. And he now is talking to them, teaching them, before Judas comes back to betray him, handing him over, and he would go to die on the cross for their sins. He washed their feet, serving them. He would sacrifice himself for them. And here, he has completed his teaching for them. As he says at the beginning of this conversation with them, I give you a new commandment. 
Love one another as I have loved you. Here, we write it in our scripture here. This is my command. Love each other as I have loved you. He finishes this part up again. This is my command. Love each other. Jesus says, you are no longer my students because I have taught you the way. And the way is to love each other. Jesus says, I am no longer your master alone and you are no longer my slave alone because you know the master's plan. Love each other. What does that look like? He tells us here, the greatest way to show love is to lay down your life for your friends. Now, there's a bunch of different ways we can do that. We can actually, as many in our military have, thanks be to God for the freedoms we have, given their lives for others. Or in your day-to-day life, you can still lay down your life for your friends. You can do things for other people. Especially, I want you to think about people who you think may need to be closer to Jesus. How can I be used by God to allow God to bring them closer to God? How can I participate in the ministry of reconciliation? Or how can I allow other people to reconcile my life, my relationships with others? This scripture comes right after one of the famous examples Jesus uses as teaching. As he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. That is verses 1 through 8 here in uh, John chapter 15. Verses 1 through 8 is Jesus giving that example. I'm the vine, you are the branches. We pick up right after that. That's why he says, uh, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Remain in me as I remain in my Father. That remain, that's the abiding. A lot of preachers preach on that and they say, abide in me. Well, I want to read the first couple of verses there. Jesus says in John 15, I am the true vine. My Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. I want to talk about these two things that Jesus is saying the Father does. Cutting off branches that don't bear fruit and pruning branches that do bear bear fruit. I don't know about you all, but boy, this last year certainly has seemed like, um, like a pruning season for me. And, uh, and I know for our church, for people of faith, and maybe even for you, maybe you're not associated with our church, but you watch anyway, maybe this has been a season for you. Or maybe you can look back on a time in your life and you say, man, that was a, that was a pruning season for me. Pruning seasons can be hard. About this time last year, Summer and I were living in this house near Augusta, Georgia, and there was this rose bush that kept pricking me every time I would do yard work, and it was really getting aggravated. So I decided I was going to cut that thing down. I cut that thing back so much, I thought there's no way this thing's coming back anytime soon, so I'm good, I don't have to deal with it. And I'll be dog if that thing, come spring, was blooming more fuller and thicker than it had before. That's pruning. I thought that I had cut it back so much that there was no way it was coming back, and yet it came back even more full. Sometimes we can go through these pruning seasons, just like this year, and you have times that you feel like, there's no way I'm coming back from this, or there's, there's no way I see an end in sight from this, and yet... Here we are, people of faith, seeing God give a double portion of what we had before. God is absolutely blessing the church, and he absolutely blesses us. Pruning is part of life. We have to sometimes cut back in our lives to allow room for God to work, for allow room to, for God to show us how he's working, to look back and see, okay, God, there you are, and here's where you're calling me to be, and here's who you're calling me to do, who you're calling me to be, where you're calling me to be at and do things, what you're calling me to do. We're called by God to be Christians. Sometimes that means we get pruned. I want to talk about that word just a little bit more. That word in Greek, is where we get the, the English word cathartic. And I don't know if you've used that word in your daily language or not, but sometimes people uh, can get cathartic as if uh, they're getting all the, all the poison out of them if they're sick. Sometimes people, uh, and, and you probably don't do this, but I know somebody who does, uh, some people, not an individual. Sometimes people will have something bad happen, and instead of speaking on it right now, they just hold it in. 
and then something else bad happens and they, they hold it in and then something else bad happens and they hold it in. And then finally they say, you know what? I've had enough. You've done this and you've done this and you've done this and you've done this. And the person's like, where's this coming from? Well, it's because they've held all that in. And so they're finally getting it all out. That's cathartic. It's not healthy to do it in that way. It's healthy to get things out, but not necessarily in that way. But that's what this pruning is. It's, it's getting all the poisons out, getting everything out so that, in fact, the branch may bear more fruit. The rose may come back blooming better than ever before. And then I want to talk about this other word here, the word that is used and translated as cut off. That Greek word is eros, and it can also mean lifted up. It could also mean lifted up. So it could be that, and, and I'm not saying that this is wrong. I, I believe this in, in part. And if you, if you continually resist God, God's going to allow your free will to have its way. If you continually say, yeah, I'm a Christian, but you never show any fruit. You never point people to Jesus. I think Jesus is going to say, where's your fruit, bro? Where are you at, sis? Are you sure? If God loves us, he gives us free will and he lets us have our way. And if we have our way, God honors that. But that God wants us to live for him. He wants us to bear fruit. And how do we bear fruit? Love one another. Again, that's the, that's the message. Love one another. In such a way, the greatest love, lay down your life for others. We can do that at the end of times of our lives when we actually die for somebody. We can do that every single day as we do something for somebody else, showing them the love, grace, and mercy of Jesus. This is the message. This is why we're friends of Jesus now, no longer just slaves, but we're also friends of Jesus. Now, this word here, arrows, it could be lifted up. It could be cut off. And, and so we should be wary of that message. We should say, okay, I don't want to be cut off from Jesus, so I'm going to seek to share his love. We should do that not, by the way, out of a, a place of fear. We should just say, thank you, Jesus, for saving my life. Now I want to go and share your message of salvation with others. But I digress. Eros could be lifted up. It could be lifted up. Not cut off but high and lifted up. This is why this is important. I've had times in my life, even within the last year, that I felt like, God, you have cut me off. I thought that I was bearing fruit, but obviously I'm not. I had a night in my life just this year where I thought to myself, man, I'm really not bearing any fruit. I'm a firm believer that there's gifts of the Spirit, and the Bible tells us that one of the gifts of the Spirit is faith. While I believe wholeheartedly, I do know there are people, I've, I've been their pastor, and some of you look, watching this video as part of the church or not part of the church, you are one of these people, you have the gift of faith. And that is a wonderful gift because you never doubt anything. You know that God is, is for you. You have that positivity. I My gift of my gift is, is, is preaching, I suppose, building relationships with people. And I have strong faith, but I doubt sometimes and I wrestle with God. And that's okay. If you're like that and you wrestle with God, that's okay. God can handle it. Read the book of Psalms over and over again. It's people wrestling with God. So I'm wrestling with God earlier this year. And I'm thinking, God, you've cut me off. I thought that I was bearing fruit for you, but obviously I'm not. So I was in a little bad, hard, low place. God brought me through that as only he can. And in preparing for my sermon this week, I looked back at notes that when I preached this text last time, and I saw this word, eros. It could be cut off. But if in the midst of times in life when we feel like we're cut off, in the midst of times in life when we feel like we're down and in the dumps, if we look to God, we might just find that eros can also mean lifted up. 
And if God is the gardener, and we are the branches to the trunk, to the vine that is Jesus, we might just study how a gardener makes sure that the plant is producing. And we might find that sometimes a gardener might find a branch that's been weighed down by its surroundings and by everyone that's around them and by the situation and circumstances that he or she is in. And God might say, I'm going to cut this branch a little bit so that it gets some of the weight off of it so that the branch may lift up a little, so that branch may get off the ground and get some air under it. And sometimes if it needs to happen, God might just, the gardener maybe, might just take that branch and tie it to the vine so that it's right beside Jesus, so that it is right beside the living word so it is right beside the lord of all life so it is getting all the love that it can possibly get and sometimes god as the gardener might take that vine tie it close enough to the branch to take the branch tie it close enough to the vine where it's right there next to jesus but also a little far away so that wind can come and blow on it and blow away any poisons any diseases any sickness any evil that has been attached to that branch so that branch can finally start to heal so the branch can finally start to renew itself and you know in the bible i've preached this maybe you've heard this before the word for wind is the same word for breath it's the same word for spirit So God is blowing the spirit on this branch saying, come back to life. I'm lifting you up. I don't want to cut you off and so that you would die. I want you to be right here close to the vine. I want you to be right here close to Jesus. I want you to feel the spirit. I want you to come back to life. These dry bones can live again. Come back to life. Sometimes we find ourselves in a situation where we think, God has cut us off. And if we look to God, we might just find it's not that we've been cut off, but it's that he is lifting us up, trying to get us to come back to him, taking away all the weight that's weighing us down, putting us, just us in Jesus, so that we can dig into his word, pray to him, talk to him, live for him. So maybe you're in one of those two situations. Where in this last year, you felt like you've been through a pruning season and you are seeing God bloom. Maybe you're going through pruning right now. I assure you, if you look to God, you will see yourself bloom. Maybe. Maybe you felt like you've been cut off. And I assure you, God never stops seeking you. He never stops. If you think you've been cut off, look to God and find you haven't been cut off. You've been lifted up. But maybe you've been right there by the branch the whole time. Maybe you've got such great faith. You never doubt. You never ponder for a second. And you've just been hanging out by the branch the whole time. If that's you, Jesus tells us we are his friends because we know the master plan. You know the master plan is to point other people to Jesus. We've been given the ministry of reconciliation. If there's somebody in your life who you know that person may feel like they're cut off, that person may feel like they're going through pruning, that person needs Jesus. Well, sometimes in order for the gardener to allow a branch to be tied to the vine, the gardener needs to take one of the branches that are stuck to the vine and tie it apart from the vine a little bit so it can breathe a little, feel the spirit a little, and also so that the other vine can get closer to the branch. We need to realize sometimes there's somebody who needs Jesus. How can we, therefore, just like Jesus did, humble ourselves and lift them up so that they can be closer to Jesus, so that they can be closer to the vine? Because we all are branches held together by the vine. We're not in this by ourselves. We have other branches. We have other Christians attached to the vine doing this ministry of reconciliation together. So I want you to ponder today, tomorrow, this week. Where are you at? Are you one of those who's been pruned and you see the blooms? Are you one of those who you're being pruned right now? Are you one of those who you just feel like God has cut you off? I assure you he hasn't looked to him. It may be that you've been lifted up rather than cut out. Maybe you've been stuck to the tree and you turn around for the first time and you realize, oh, there are other people 
who need to be attached to the vine. I'm going to reach out and bring them to Jesus too. We all find ourselves in different positions. I want you to pray about where you are so that you can see where God has got you best fitted to lay your life down for your friends so that all may come to know Jesus. And I also want you to think, as I close out in prayer, I'm going to pause for a moment. And I want you to think about those veterans who've gone before us, those veterans of the faith who have passed the faith on to you, who has shown you freedom in Christ, who has shown you love of Jesus. And how can you pass that on to others? How can you be a veteran of the faith too and share Jesus with others? Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we pray to you right now, giving you thanks for all of those who came before us, for all of those veterans of the faith who have fought for our freedom, who have argued for our freedom, who have stood up and been brave enough to speak when they needed to speak, been brave enough to fight for freedom when they need to fight. Show us, Lord, how we can do that for others. Show us, Lord, how we can reach out and bring others closer to you. Show us, Lord, when you are using other people to reach out to us, to bring us closer to you, and let us allow other people to minister to us to bring us closer to you and to reconcile our relationships with others. God, in the midst of life, if we feel like we've been cut off, show us you're still seeking us. That you are lifting us up, that we may see Jesus lifted up high and forevermore. Lord, show us that if we're going through a pruning season, that there is a double portion on the other side of blooms that we may live life vibrantly for you. Show us where we are and how in the middle of life here and now, we can rightly love one another and show the greatest love there is to show by laying our lives down for others, just as Lord Jesus, you laid your life down for us. For all of this, we give you thanks We give you all glory, honor, and praise as we pray this all, Jesus, in your name. Amen and amen.